We're here for another wonderful Vacants to Value blight elimination event here in uh, Chum on uh, Tavoli. And uh, we're here to, uh, to continue the process that we've embarked upon over the last couple of years. Uh, my name is Paul Graziano. I'm the Commissioner of Housing for the City of Baltimore. And I'm here with the Mayor and a number of other folks whom I'll introduce in a minute. Um, but I want to thank you for coming out this morning, and I'm glad that it has uh, stopped raining and warmed up a little bit. Uh, the wind just break, cool off a little bit, uh, or slow down a little bit, it'll be a little even warmer. Uh, but spring is on the way. The Orioles are on their way back. All right. All right. All right. Don't jinx us, Yankees. Yeah. <laughs> hey, my team is falling apart, you know. <laughs> Talk about getting old. Uh, <laughs> but uh, anyway, so we got some work to do today. We got seven houses behind us here that are going to come down. Uh, thanks to, uh, where's Pless? Pless is out there somewhere. Pless okay. is here, and he's ready to rock and roll in a few minutes. Uh, uh, this is uh, going to be a very, very important uh, part of a, of a larger whole. We actually are committed to demolishing everything you see here from 28th Street up to Hartford Road. And uh, our goal is to get this completed, uh, Councilwoman Mary Pat Clark, uh, by the end of this calendar Thank year. You. Uh, that is our goal, Madam Mayor, and is part of our Vacants to Value strategy. Uh, and we're very much excited about this. Uh, I want to acknowledge a few people are, who are here. I did mention the councilwoman who's been a strong advocate for this program over the years. Uh, lest, lest we forget that it's a priority, she reminds us uh, many, many times a day. Uh, <laughs> we have um, part of our uh, housing team, uh, Julie Day, uh, Deputy Commissioner, Yay. Deputy Commissioner Braverman, uh, Chief of Staff uh, Kim Washington is over there, over there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Sharon Porter and her team, as yeah. always, there uh, to communicate these ex important events. I know from uh, the, the mayor's team, we have uh, Ganesha Martin and uh, 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 Mackenzie uh, Garvin is here as well, out there somewhere. Uh, we appreciate their support. Um, and of course, the community. Um, Mark Washington, where's Mark? Right Is he right behind me? Yes. Uh, Mark has been uh, consistently, uh, I, I don't want to pick beer, but the, the strongest advocate for this community. And we want to thank Mark for, for, your, for your strong advocacy and for your patience as we work through this. Um, we really are uh, beginning uh, on, on a major role at this point, and I think you will see this come down very quickly as we complete the relocations and so forth. Um, and also, uh, the police are here. I know uh, uh, Major Worley and the uh, uh, Eastern District folks are here, and appreciate North, the police. North, Northeast. Northeast. Uh, North, Northeast and, District, and, yes. And Captain yeah. Robinson. Yes, and Captain Robinson. Uh, we do appreciate uh, the police uh, uh, support for the things that we do. Uh, last week, uh, the mayor had a, a major uh, a collaborative effort in, um, in the Oliver neighborhood where the police and the housing and health and everyone else were working together. And it's just a reminder that we're a team uh, along with the community. So um, without further ado, I am going to ask uh, the mayor to come up and reflect upon uh, yet another one of our uh, Vacants to Value events. I hope that nobody gets sick of these things because I get excited with every one of them. I, I'm sure the mayor does as well. Thank mayor you. Stephanie Rollins Blake. Thank you. It's still morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And, Commissioner, I doubt very seriously that our community members will get tired of these events. There is a lot of work to do, and they have waited a long time. Uh, to get to this point. Uh, Councilwoman Mary Pat Clark, um, who is, uh, is sharing the title as, as of, uh, mayor with Mark, Wa mayor of Chum with, with uh, Mark Washington. Are you deputy mayor? mayor? I think uh, deputy mayor would be the best Thank you. She is, I, I tease her um, because Councilwoman Clark loves this community. She loves all of her district. Everybody knows that, but there's a special place in our heart, and I, I hope you don't mind me speaking for you on this that, uh, with Chum. 
uh, she knows the needs of this community and she knows how long uh, the community has waited to see progress uh, in this area and on this street in particular. Uh, it's great for me to be back here to continue the work that we're doing revitalizing this uh, community in partnership uh, with all of you. I want to uh, recognize Mark Washington again and all of the members of the Coldstream Homestead Montebello Community yes. Corporation for all that you do. You know, when I, when I met Mark, um, our relationship, I would say, was chilly. Um, and that's probably being kind. Uh, because like far too many community leaders, uh, he had been let down one too many times uh, by city government. Uh, promises were made and uh, his, he felt his community was overlooked. And I came saying that I wanted different uh, for this community. And he was, he was I, I would say kind, but it was basically, uh, okay, put your money where your mouth is. Let's see, let's see where this goes. And, um, you know, one project after next, one collaboration after the next. Uh, Mark, I hope you, you have seen and can, will continue to see uh, that I have uh, made good on my commitment to uh, revitalize this community. Because, you know, when I, when I walked around the Trump community, I saw a community like where my mom grew up, where I grew up, homeowners who love where they live and just didn't love living around blight and knew that they deserved better. And that's why when I became mayor, I, I asked the commissioner and his team, I said, we have to do something. We have to do something now and we have to get it right uh, because we are on the cusp of losing, losing these community members who want to work in partnership with us. You know, they, they want to believe that uh, City Hall can be a partner. So we launched Vacants to Value in November of 2010, and under this initiative, we are tearing down properties like these all across the city and creating opportunities for value to exist. This city was challenged with more than 16,000 vacant buildings just like these. Roughly 75% were, were privately owned. And we are seeking uh, through Vacants to Value to encourage reinvestment in neighborhoods impacted by blighted properties, working with private investors, develop, uh, developers, not-for-profit organizations who want to see new life in our neighborhoods. And after two years, we are starting to see the strength building in our great city. We now have hundreds of homes with strong, committed residents. You can see blighted blocks that were once uh, really a black eye on the community. They're now under rehabilitation. And now we are back in Chum. I have a vision of growing our city by 10,000 families, and I am enlisting the Chum community to help me bring those families right back here. You know, when, one of the times we were out here, not too far, um, Councilwoman, we were ta I was talking to a neighbor who said that she wants to move back. She grew up in the community and she said that she wants to move back, but can't. She said she, she couldn't bring her family back to the block where she grew up because it was all vacant. Right. I said, we are creating opportunities for people who want to come back who want to be uh, in the neighborhoods where they grew up to have the, the promise of a future that they can believe in. So even though we've, we have, um, we've done a lot of, uh, of work with our vacants to value, we've uh, in fiscal year 2013 to date, 135, 137 properties have been sold with 92 more pending application. We've issued more than $1,900 citations to vacant building owners who have failed to maintain their properties. So, you know, I, I, I kept hearing from residents, you know, we're doing everything that we're supposed to do with our properties. We're looking across the street at somebody who's do doing nothing. Uh, and we've, uh, we have issued these citations and it spurred more than $47 million in private investment. More than a thousand vacant properties have been rehabbed or undergoing rehab and 90% of the city owned properties and community development clusters have been sold. We've issued a $106, $10,000 home ownership booster program incentive, incentives. 28% of those people, almost a third are new to the city. And, uh, and, and citywide, over 31 acres of vacant land have been turned over to volunteers and community leaders to create community green spaces, gardens, uh, as a part of our Power and Dirt initiative. And even though 
We have demolished more vacant property than any recent administration. Everyone knows that funding constraints for demolition make it difficult to meet the scale of the problem of blighted vacant homes. And our current effort is not enough to make a real dent in the problem. But here's what we're going to do to change that. Last month, we unveiled a 10-year financial plan for Baltimore. We're going to transform the way the city does business, and we're also going to find new ways to increase investment that will help Baltimore grow. With the 10-year plan, we will fund a significant increase in blight elimination. First, we are going to front load $9 million in new demolition funding from the Maryland Attorney General's mortgage settlement. Second, we will quadruple local dollars for vacancy value demolitions for more than, to more than $100 million over 10 years. And finally, we're going to add a one-time $10 million surge in funding next year so we can begin to see an immediate impact in all of our neighborhoods. Altogether, the 10-year financial plan will help tear down more than 4,000 vacant structures in Baltimore City. All right. <laughs> Thank you. And this demolition search will greatly support other aspects of vacancy to value that are helping us to breathe new life into our neighborhoods. These incentives combined with local live where you work uh, grants and, and the recently announced Wells Fargo City Lift grants allow people to bring tens of thousands of dollars to the, the uh, table, uh, the closing table, uh, you know, to help with their down payment and closing costs between the colleges, universities, and other anchor institutions with students, with teachers, young professionals, looking to put down roots, all of these things together, working together help. And we are confident that the, the uniqueness and the vitality of Baltimore's neighborhoods have just what people want. Nobody wants to live in a cookie cutter neighborhood. They want character. They want a history, and that's what our neighborhoods offer. So as we continue to improve public safety and education, we can bring people back to communities like Chum. And that's what we're making, why we're making the tough decisions now and letting people know that Baltimore is on the path to fiscal stability and for growth. We have a healthy goal, an ambitious goal, but I know that we can do it uh, because I'm looking at partners who will make it so. So thank you again for your commitment to this great city, to this great neighborhood, and I hope you all have a wonderful day as we begin this demolition. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you for your support for the Vacancy Value Program in all its dimensions. Uh, and it is so, so critical to get that demolition money because Frankly, uh, that's not the kind of money that investors and uh, developers right. want to put up, or, or banks for that matter. It's the kind of money that the city really has to put up up front to prepare these sites for reinvestment. And so it's a very, very wise investment by the city today to, uh, to help build our communities and bring investment dollars back to, the, the, to these wonderful neighborhoods. I wanted to acknowledge uh, Bill Bolden, who's our building inspector, uh, who, whom I uh, missed before, and uh, he's a critical part of this piece. Uh, we've got to have people out here watching this, making sure that things are done properly, and that. And, and Bill is out there all the time. I want to thank you, Bill, for your hard work. Um, uh, by the way, there are of the 4,000. We're we're talking about 88 houses on this stretch. I actually walked down and physically counted them. Uh, this uh, before we started from 28th Street to the alley behind uh, Harford Road are 88 houses. We're going to demolish right. seven today. Right. That'll leave us 81 more, and those are going to come down between now and the end of the year. So, um, so I, I'm going to give Mary Pat Clark, huh? the councilwoman, a chance to thank me for that and, thank, <laughs> and, and to thank the mayor uh, for that commitment. Thank you very much. I will. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. I would and have the mayor. thanked. Don't, forget the mayor. Uh, don't worry. She I don't. The money. <laughs> I, I don't forget the mayor, and I would have thanked you both even without your telling me to do so. Well, I just want to make sure you didn't forget. I, I know, and I understand, and I drive you crazy, and Julie, and the mayor. But I want to say how important this is and how much this vacance to value program that the mayor has created in partnership with the housing commissioner has made a difference in this project here the the net and it's leanne on the board wave your hand thank you and the board the entire board of chum 
uh, for all that you have done because it was the board, along with Mark, that made the plan that created the Tivoli Triangle. And that was, we won't say how many years ago, because now we have vacants to value. And things are moving along very well. But the whole plan is this. Tivoli, the 2700 block of Fenwick, the 2700 block of Hugo will be acquired, people relocated, and then demolished to create a site for affordable new housing where Madam Mayor, the lady you met, can come home. Because it was always part of Chum's plan that people would come back home. It was always said, it's written in the plan, the mayor has emphasized it this morning. It's not for, it, yes, we, we'll take some of your 10,000. All right, definitely, happy to have them. But it's also for the people who lived here all their lives to come home and be able to afford to do that, and we know they will. So, Madam Mayor, thank you. Thank you for the program that has finally put us on track. We look forward to the day when we stand here with a developer and announce that this triangle, because it forms a triangle with Hartford Road, overlooking beautiful Clifton Park and the renovated mansion, that that developer will announce that they, they're breaking ground and building the new triangle for the Chum community and for Baltimore City. Thank you all. Thank you very much, uh, Councilwoman Clark, and uh, appreciate your advocacy. Uh, um, we will complete this work on uh, Tivoli, and we will move forward. Um, I know that uh, the Deputy Commissioner uh, Braverman is already in discussions with our next speaker about uh, critical other demolitions, and we're certainly going to do our best to accommodate uh, those uh, requests. Uh, so I would like to again acknowledge the hard work and leadership of Mark Washington and ask him to come up and say a few words as well. Hey, first, I want to thank everyone, uh, community residents, uh, Chum board members, and uh, those uh, team Chum uh, business associates and nonprofit associates that uh, have joined us today. Um, I want to thank the commissioner, Mary Pat, Michael Braverman, and Julie Day, but most importantly, I want to thank the mayor. Um, the mayor has always um, been straightforward with me. Um, I have never had to worry about whether or not she was being honest or whether or not she was telling me the truth. While I might not always like some of the things she has said to me, I respect her for having the courage and the respect enough for me to tell me the truth. These individuals who stand behind me today have truly decided to stand with this community. And what I have to say today isn't so much about their commitment to the Chum community and the city of Baltimore. It's about what we as Chum residents will commit to and where uh, we uh, stand. I jotted down a few notes because it's important to find out where we as a community uh, are. Uh, do we stand for the fruitless familiarity of the status quo or do we stand for something else, something greater than ourselves? Something that demonstrates the human will to survive is only exceeded by the human will to succeed. Do we stand for those values that make us honorable or do we pretend and stand for nothing at all. We stand on broad shoulders here in Chum, shoulders of our foremothers and forefathers whose tradition, values, and ideas are woven into our DNA, who despite seemingly insurmountable odds took a stand and vowed to change a community. Their stand still serves as our greatest inspiration. As we stand here in front of the home of Margaret Connors, 2796 oh, yeah. Tavoli, I recall her spirit and determination. 
I recall her effort to maintain order in the midst of chaos and operate her daycare center. Many a day I sat on Ms. Connor's porch and I asked her to hang in there, not to give up, to stand firm in the face of adversity, that one day, God willing, we would help her get to a better place. Despite many an invitation, I have never visited the new homes of the residents relocated from Tivoli. It is not that I don't share in their joy, because I do. But now is not the time for celebration. It is the time for us to continue our effort and demonstrate what we stand for. So I ask you, what do you stand for? A great man once said, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. We, we must stand for something. So I ask you not to stand with me, but to stand for yourself and to stand for the hope of a better tomorrow and to stand for the neighbor who is unable or unwilling to stand with themselves and to stand with this mayor who I firmly believe in and wholeheartedly support. I ask you to stand for something greater than yourself. I ask you to stand for this community. While our legs are weak, they grow stronger. And while we have won no wars or claim no victories, this is where I choose to make my stand. Thank you. All right. Amen. Thank you very much for those eloquent words and that vision, uh, Mark. Uh, you uh, certainly uh, are, are providing a, 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 a guiding uh, a direction there for, for all of us. And uh, we're committed to working with you uh, to see that vision become a reality. Um, many of you may remember that we were over at 1901 East 31st Street oh, uh, yes. a few months ago with Thank the mayor, you. knocking down that large apartment building that was creating all kinds of problems uh, for the community and, and, the, and the lady next door the, oh, who had been there for Miss Terry, Ms. Terry right. for how many decades. Uh, and so this is just a, a further, uh, further uh, piece of that. And I might add that we tried this many years ago uh, Madam Mayor, uh, we knocked down a few houses over there on the left, yeah. and we got we just got stalled, and we just we just ran out of money, we ran out of out of initiative, and uh, it was really under your vacancy to value program yeah. that we were able yeah. to resuscitate this program, this specific project, and go to scale, and so um, yeah. you know th there's a reason why there was a delay, and there's a reason now why we're making it happen, and it's because of. Uh, Mayor Stephanie Rollins Blake's vacants to value program and her commitment to putting the resources out and not just have some kind of paper program that doesn't really uh, accomplish anything. So I want to thank the mayor again and I'm going to ask um, Pless to uh, get to work here. Three, two, one.